Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is Dr. Daniel Knowles, your host, coming to you, of course, from an altitude of 5,280 feet in the Mile High State of Colorado. I am super thrilled to have our guest uh, on the podcast today, the one and only Dr. Peter Amlinger, graduated from CCMCC in 1985 and has a family-oriented practice uh, in Canada, uh, regularly speaks Dynamic Essentials. I had the honor of first meeting him speaking when he spoke at Sherman many uh, years ago, mm -hmm. and we had a great uh, connection and conversation. So I'm really grateful for our community, our conversation today, and I think everyone's going to enjoy it. Uh, I will say, of course, make sure you all mark your calendar for Mile High 2022, which will be our 10th anniversary in June, June 2nd to 5th. We look forward to seeing everyone there. Uh, it's going to be a big celebration for 10 years of uh, putting, putting together Mile High. And uh, Dr. Peter puts together an incredible um, event, um, Pure and Powerful in Canada. And I'm sure we'll get to talk about that somewhat. He was nominated for the Canadian Chiropractor of the Year Award three times. Uh, and was a recipient of the award in 2006. Uh, he started Pure and Powerful in 2004. So it's been going just on a little bit longer than Mile High, which is I'm so, <laughs> I, one of my inspirations. Um, and he's, um, in 2006, he was elected to the executive board of CCO, College of Chiropractors of Ontario. And um, he is just an incredible, dynamic, innate centered human being. Thank you for joining us uh, today, Dr. Peter. Thanks for having me, Danny. And, uh, and it's an honor for me to be here. I've, uh, as I said earlier, as, as soon as the invite came out, I got really excited and, uh, and I'm glad we were able to find a date and get together today. I'm, I'm, I just, uh, I see everything that you and, and your wife do in chiropractic in Colorado and around the world. And, and I'm just proud to be a colleague of yours. So this is an honor for me to be here. Well, and back at you. Thank you so much for saying that. We, we look, you know, are inspired by you uh, very highly. So I think this is going to be very inspiring. I, I, I'm excited about our conversation today because I know it will impact many lives that, uh, in, in, the, in the days and months to follow. So let's start with people getting to know you a little better. And how did you find your way into the chiropractic world? That's a that's a great starting point. Um, it's always good to start at the beginning. And it and I was, it was the end of eleventh grade, and I found myself in. I went to an all boys Catholic high school, and I found myself in the guidance office on the last day of school, um, for reasons which we won't go into today. But I was there, and the priests were having a little meeting about me, and 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 while I was waiting for them to finish up their conversation about me I picked up a book and it happened to be the course calendar of uh of Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College and I opened the book and I read the definition of chiropractic and something inside of me literally said this is what you're supposed to do with your life and 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 I said okay you know like BJ said I will in the story of that something I said okay and and I begged my way back into the good graces of the priests. And I, and literally I was at a fork in the roads at, at that point in my life, my life changed in that instant. I, I knew I was going to be a chiropractor. I knew nothing about chiropractic. Nobody in my family had seen a chiropractor that I knew of. Um, and, and, uh, my sister was a nurse. We were a medically oriented family. And, um, and that was it. And I went from a crappy student to a straight A student and, uh, and, and went home and told my mom that I was going to be a chiropractor. I, it was a Wednesday. I remember that for some reason. And my mom didn't say anything. And two days later, um, I came home and or my mom came home from the hairdresser and she said, you know, I was talking to the ladies at the salon and why don't you be an optometrist instead? And I don't know where that came from, but it, it was perfect because my per personality was such at the time that inside I went, I'm absolutely, I just got galvanized on becoming a chiropractor. Right. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and then when I, when I, 
after third year of chiropractic college when I was again the top student and uh, my mom said maybe you are supposed to be a chiropractor and she became one of my greatest fans and her life was changed by chiropractic so so that's how it started and then um if if I was in second year of my undergrad and had applied to school and my interview was coming up then I thought you know I should probably be able to say I'm a chiropractic patient in my interview. They're probably <laughs> going to ask, you know, I, I don't know how that, anyway. So I, I went and found a chiropractor and, and, and the way I found it was he was close to the university. <laughs> so I walked into this guy's office and, uh, and um, he started adjusting me and, and, you know, I still didn't really know what a chiropractor was. He and he gave, he gave me Joseph Jancy's book actually, and and uh, gave me some some insight into chiropractic. But at that point in my life, I was a sick human being. I I literally had a headache every day of my life. I'd come home, take two aspirin, and sleep for an hour. I had really bad indigestion. I ate two packs of Roll Aids a day, and. Uh, and now then what I know about aspirin, I figured the aspirin was causing my indigestion. Anyway, the, the medics said I had a nervous stomach and I'd probably have an ulcer someday. I had this chronic knee problem that the MDs couldn't figure out and they wanted to do exploratory surgery. And I was wise enough at that young age to say surgery is not for figuring things out. It's for fixing things. So I'm not doing that. And they said, well, just stop playing all sports. Then I was you know, into multiple sports. And, and anyway, um, and, and then I had this other really bizarre thing where if I laid down uh, on the floor and put my head on the floor, I would immediately get dizzy and see double. And I just mm -hmm. didn't tell anybody about it because I thought it was pretty weird. And, and concurrently, um, I went to have my first eye exam ever uh, because the university I went to had the only optometry program in Canada at the time, and perhaps mm -hmm. still does. Anyway, I went there and, and found out that when both my eyes were open, I was 95% blind in my right eye. It just didn't work. And, and they said my eye was slightly turned. My brain had stopped processing the information. Otherwise, I'd be seeing double all the time. Um, and as a result, I had no depth perception. I had mm -hmm. monocular vision and, uh, which, which made sense to me because, you know, I was a catcher, I played ball and I was a catcher and I was fine. But if, if you put me in the field, the worst thing in the world for me was trying to figure out where a fly ball was going to come down. I'd be like 15 feet away from the thing. Mm -hmm. And, and I couldn't perceive a dip in a sidewalk. So I thought I was clumsy because I was tripping all the time. And they said that I was too old at the ripe old age of 18 to, uh, to have this corrected, but they gave me these prism lenses and these glasses and some exercises to do. And, and I broke the glasses after two weeks. And my dad said, that's it. Cause mm -hmm. we didn't have coverage. And I didn't do the exercises, but I did keep getting adjusted. And I went back for a six month follow up. And the, the fella uh, that I attracted was the, was the leading expert in the world on monocular vision. I remember he did research on seals for some reason. At any rate, he started getting really excited because my eye was starting to change. And to make a long story short, after a year of chiropractic care, I didn't have headaches anymore. My gut was fine. My knee healed up and just started working properly. I could lie on the floor, put my head on the floor, not get dizzy and see double. And I had 20-20-20 vision in both eyes with both eyes open and depth perception. Wow. And so that's how I got into chiropractic. And, and, uh, and that's my story. And one of the reasons I'm so involved in the profession is, mm -hmm. is because, you know, that coupled up with the fact that my wife uh, came into my office in my first year of practice, and, and um, she came in for headaches and period cramps, I remember. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the consultation, she said, you know, if you're going to be my doctor, I figure I should tell you everything, right? And I said, of course. She said, well, I got to tell you that I'm, I have an eating disorder. And I literally went, no kidding, because she weighed 83 pounds, right? And, mm -hmm. and uh, 
And she, so she had a treatment resistant eating disorder. She was down to sick children's hospital and the best, best um, treatment programs that existed at the time and was just getting worse. Mm. And I, and, and, and I often joke and say, we didn't x-ray her to get her listing. I just held her up to the, the sun and said, PRI, you know, but, um, but we, we told her the story and we started adjusting her and, and she will tell you that it didn't happen in one adjustment, but just mm-hmm. over time, something changed inside her and she started loving herself and she, she was bulimic and she just couldn't force herself to throw up anymore. And she healed herself, you wow. know, and, and so between her experience and my experience, chiropractic has given us so much in our life. We, we could never give enough back to the profession and the principal. And, and that's what's fueled our passion and our practice all of these years. Um, I, we'll have to have some other conversation some other time when we're in person because we have very similar uh, stories as I was listening to that. And uh, I'd like to ask this, who, who are some of the people over the years or actually even more focused initially that inspired you more towards the center of the principle? Great question. And it, and it actually happened, um, it, it, it happened before I hit chiropractic school. I was blessed to have uh, my football coach, Mo Targus, was a very um, positively oriented, goal setting, uh, entrepreneurial spirit and a fly fisherman. So he taught me how to fly fish. Um, and he often told me, you'll learn more on the trout stream than you would in the classroom. Like he used to pull me out of class and take me fishing. And, and uh, he's like, don't, don't worry about it. I'll cover for you. But so, so Mo really impacted me just to, you know, live at a higher vibration and look at the world through a positive lens and to, to set goals and to be disciplined. And, and uh, he, he was probably my first, you know, he's more than my football coach. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then in chiropractic college, um, one of my classmates, father was a chiropractor, his name was John Whitney, and, and he had a management program, and he, he, um, he offered the program to the, the students in Becky's class. So I, I took his course, and again, it was all about success consciousness and whatnot, the print, I just accepted the principle on full faith, you know, as soon as I heard it, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, and, and I went, yeah, that this is what it is. And, and, and so I really started getting involved. I graduated in 85. I, I started a practice. It was really an adjustment only practice right from the get go. And, and it just got, I got more clear on that. It was diversified technique to start. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple of second generation chiropractors in upper classes as well. And so we spent a lot of times usually at the pubs talking about chiropractic and whatnot. So, so it, I just attracted people. And, and back in the day when I graduated, there were some great chiropractors in my community and they mm-hmm. welcomed us. And, and so really the first big, big, shift then happened in 1990 in July of 1990 I went to my first dynamic essentials meeting and I had heard Sigafusa a couple of times at a Parker and 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 whatnot and really resonated with them but I went to DE and and that's where the shoe really dropped so to speak Mm. and I just took it (laughs) to another level and and so and I and I can tell you that so what happened I went to DE a, a a colleague, a friend named Brett Moore took me to D or, or suggested we go. So uh, we went to D. It was him and his wife and I, I think we're the only three Canadians at that particular meeting. Um, and I remember I was walking around the Sinel Center by myself and this guy in a really sort of horny uh, flowered shirt comes up to me and gave me a hug and said, welcome. And I went, man, this place is a bit weird. And, and <laughs> later that night he was on the platform and it was Dr. John Hoffman. And, and I heard Sid talk and, and I cried a lot that weekend. It was Clay Thompson's uh, birthday that weekend, his 82nd uh-huh. birthday. And I met Clay and I sat in his class and went, I'm switching techniques. So, so it, I came back and ordered three Thompson tables and shifted to Thompson technique. And, and so after that DE, a couple of weeks went by and, 
uh, and I went to a football game with Brett, with the same chiropractor who I went down there with. He said, but how's things since D? And I'm like, you know what? Really good. I think it feels busier. And, and But I hadn't looked. I hadn't looked at any numbers. I just came back and dove in. And I was seeing about 2.30 a week before I went down to D and 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 went to the football game. And Brett said, well, check and, and see. So I went back to the office on Monday and checked. And, and in two, three weeks, my practice had doubled. I was seeing... 450 a wow. week and I've never looked back and and so I talked to Brett about it and he said well what's different and I said I don't know and I don't really want to think about it or I might screw it up right so <laughs> the, next day, the next day I was in my car going fly fishing driving up to the stream and I had the friend within tape and one of Sid's tapes and he talked about the cooking utensil story um, where he had a love experience with a cooking utensil and became one with the cooking utensil. And it's like, that's what did it. And so basically what happened was everything I knew about chiropractic up here went down into my heart. And I just started expressing it from a different space. And, mm -hmm. and so the words didn't change that much, but the energy behind the word shifted. And I just really owned it in the core of my being. And so Sid became a mentor and Dr. Didi became a mentor and Dick Santo became a mentor and Sigafoos and, and uh, Ian Grass and, and all the DE greats. You know, I was privileged to Fred Barge and, and uh, Michael Kale. I started studying Kale's work in 1992. And so, so really, you know, um, everything that I do in my practice now, I've learned at DE pretty much. And it's, a, it's an upper cervically focused uh clinic that uses thompson technique to to and i just merged the the you know toggle work and knee chest work and crane condyle lift and thompson work and i've just merged it into the amlinger protocol as i <laughs> as i now call it which is what we all do so so you know sega Fus became really dear to me and and we had a great time i i was often uh the first speaker at D on a Friday morning. So I'd get up before anyone else was up. And the, on, the only other person who was up was Jim. So, I, and he used to call me the, pardon my language, the fucking Canadian, um, but he had a pet name for everybody. Right. But, but I'd get up uh, and I'd sit and the way I'd prepare for my DE talk. So they'd sit and drink coffee with Jim Sigafus and he'd be mm -hmm. like, why, why do people have to prepare for a talk? You just don't get yourself out of the way, you know? And, and I don't mm -hmm. disagree with them. So, and, and Dick and I, Dick Santo and I and Paula Hedgelon went over to Spain together in, I think, 04 and, and just before Dick, Dick's health took a turn. And after the seminar, Dick and I ran a healing circle on the beach. And, and after the healing circle, we went for a walk and Dick sort of passed me the torch during that walk. And, and so, you know, I just stand on the shoulders of many great chiropractors. And, and that's the other sort of pillar uh, yeah. between our, Tracy's experience and my experience and, and the shoulders who, uh, of whom I stand on. I just, I just have to be responsible and, and, and continue to move this principle and its practice forward and touch as many lives as I can because of, mm -hmm. of those men and women. Mm -hmm. You know, um, unfortunately, many people who, uh, you know, graduate now, graduate the last uh, several years, didn't get to go to DE back in the day. Um, I personally didn't get to, I was in the Sherman bubble uh, when I was yeah. in school and, and the people that influenced us at that time. What was it like going to DE at, at that time? What was the experience like? Well, I, I mean, it, it's. The, I think the biggest part of that experience, Danny, was that Sid was in his prime, right? And uh, you and you got to experience that man's vibration. And is is. I mean, the other thing that happened at my first DE meeting, and, and you know, Sid spoke for like three hours in the afternoon. We broke for supper. He's coming back for the evening session, and I'm kind of standing around, and I'm I'm still a little bit blown away, and all of a sudden somebody grabs my ass really hard and it's Sid <laughs> he's walking up to the platform he's like happy to see him and, and and it's like I'm just I'm not in Kansas anymore you know but 
but <laughs> so so the, the just the power of all of the speakers you know uh, Sid was in his prime Sig was really in his prime Santa was in his prime Bob uh, uh, John Hoffman Jimmy Gregg uh, Ian Grassum, all these, and, and Chuck Ribley, all these incredibly powerful communicators were in their prime. And then you've got like 2,000 people in the room. Like it was right. massive. Right? And, and so it was kind of like being at a, at a concert and a church, a, you know, a Pentecostal revival all rolled <laughs> into one sort of thing. And, and the emotion that moved through the room was unbelievable. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, but but the the other thing was, and I remember sitting there, and it was after a couple of DEs, and I and you know I had spoken on the plate of stars, but the shift that happened for me was that that it was a family, right? So so I remember sitting there, and and I and it was Dick Santo up on the platform, <clears throat> and I went, he's not a speaker. He's he's my brother, sort of mm-hmm. thing, and 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 you know my much older brother, but um, but but really it was just that family atmosphere, and it was a place where um, the speakers were available and 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 welcomed you, and I I spent many hours sitting talking it down with Chuck Ribley or Sigathus or or Dick, and mm-hmm. and um, you know and. It, it, and they were just there giving of themselves, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and then as it transitioned and whatnot, because I was there through the whole transition as well. And, and the thing that's always been at the, is the dynamic essential, which is, you know, uh, for those who haven't heard it, the dynamic essential is the new spirit born into the consciousness of a man or a woman when they become aware of, loyal to humble to and obedient to the will of God within themselves. Mm -hmm. And Sid always used to say, um, when, when you, when you achieve that, when you become loyal, humble, aware, and obedient to the will of God within yourself, you become dynamic and that's essential. Mm -hmm. Right. So we, so D is a play, we marry the, the principle of chiropractic, we marry the dynamic essential and then the concept of lasting purpose, which is to do, to give, to love, to serve out of your own abundance, which without any conscious thought of return. Mm -hmm. And so when you marry those three principles together, uh, which D has always done and never really stopped, even when there was only, you know, 50 of us there. Um, Mm -hmm. and, And that's been the consistent thing all the way through. So it's just a group of, of people there supporting one another uh inspiring one another to be authentic and to be yourself right like i i've often said or i have said and brian lieberman says it more than me now but he says that you know the uh, that the one thing the biggest thing that he did for me was it's the it's the first place in my life where i ever went where people were okay more than okay with me being me you know, ah. so there's no facades. There's just you can go there. Uh, you, you can talk about your crap because we all have it. You, you and and you you can. It, it, it's just a place of acceptance, and 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 we're uh, we and we we work to inspire others to just be their authentic selves, right? Mm-hmm. And to become more innately guided because that's when we're most most authentic. So, so so for me the vibe has never left. I, I get the same feeling when I walk into a D meeting now, as I did back in the nineties, when I first started going to D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then what inspired you or where, where did you get the um, calling to, to start uh, pure and powerful? So, so pure and powerful actually started as a, as a, different program called wonders of chiropractic and it Ah. started in 1992 and and so what happened was i was sitting having lunch with with uh a couple three other canadian chiropractors brett moore happened to be there again um and two other guys and i said you know we've got just as much power in canada as as they do in the states we just don't have it organized so we've got to start something and i'm going to start a program 
and it's going to be based on the Parade of Stars, which is an afternoon phenomenon oh, yeah. at, at DE where, oh, yeah. where attendees come up and talk about how DE has changed their life. So we came back from that meeting and in and, and two weeks later, like I went back, got a hotel room, sent out an email, said we're starting a program. It's going to be called Wonders of Chiropractic. And it started. Uh-huh. And I think there was six people at the first meeting, but it just grew and we would get, you know, that 80, 90 people coming out to share and, and we would often do a healing circle. So everybody got to share and it, it just sort of morphed and I would have speakers come up, uh, you know, from time to time had Virgil Crane come up, had uh, Chuck Ribley come up, Dennis Nick, and that, lots of people came up, but, uh, but so, so it just became wonders of chiropractic, which became then me speaking uh, and 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 then after that we would do like a parade of stars and and that went on from 92 to 04 and 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 then it was like we really need to organize there was a you know some really powerful chiropractors in Canada <clears throat> Jill Lamarche uh, Liz Anderson Peacock Tom Preston uh and a few others and it's like we've got to bring this group together so so i said let that said to tracy let's start a program we'll call it pure and powerful and uh let's invite these people out so so we did it and uh and in the fall of 2004 we did our first pure and powerful we had like 450 people there or something like that it was and and we've just never looked back and we've done two a year since then uh, and we've done a couple down in the islands as well, mm-hmm. um, called Pure and Powerful in the Sun. In fact, we Tracy and I, uh, we were we did a PNP in the Sun, and and somebody said, you know, we were engaged at the time, uh, and somebody said, why don't you why don't you like get married at Pure and Powerful? And we went, that's a great idea. So we did. So we had uh, we had. Uh, a pure and powerful in Jamaica and at the end of the week um, we got married on the Thursday night sort of thing so mm-hmm. so our wedding reception was the speaker's dinner <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, and you know so so it just sort of morphed from wonders of chiropractic and it's really it's it's really intended to bring the DE message um, and and to bring powerful Canadians, and now we've we've get speakers from all over the globe coming up to it and and whatnot, uh, just to drill down on the principle and the practice of chiropractic, and uh, and it's a really wonderful community. We're very very proud of it. Well, that's and, and that's needed, um, not only in the U.S. and not only in Canada, but a- around the world. Uh, how how can what would you recommend or advise or how can people better honor the principle in their practice? Um, how can they apply the principle pure and powerfully? That's a, a great question. And I, I, one of my favorite quotes is it's from Katie Byron. And she said, we are all victims of our uninvestigated thoughts. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and BJ in the green books, BJ said, if you're going to be a principal chiropractor, you have to divorce yourself from all old ways of thinking. So the first part is to take inventory, to really go in and say, how, like, where am I with the principal? Right. And, and, and so, and we just did, we just started a process. It started kind of organically where my mother-in-law who's 75 volunteered to paint the office. So, you know, Tracy said, mom, you're 75. And I said, wait a minute, I've given her free care all these years. It's the least she could do, <laughs> So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but, but anyways, mom painted the office and in the process, we took everything off the walls. And then we, we had a staff meeting and, and I just, I just wanted to refresh our mission statement a little bit. And so just went around to each of the team and said, what do we do here? Like in your words, what do we do here? And, and, you know, and from that, we developed a new mission statement. And our mission statement is to ch- is to uh, check and uh, to to detect and correct subluxations in families to optimize their expression of life. So that went on the wall in the reception area, and then I'm like, everything in the office has to be congruent with that statement, or it's not staying. So we just went through 
And, you know, and in, in room one, power that made the body heals the body. In room two, look to the spine for the cause of disease. In room three, B, uh, BJ's quote about chiropractors adjusting the cause and not treating effects, right? All the artwork, every poster ties into that. And so it informs our conversation. So it's just an inventory process because, because the principle is infinite, our appreciation of the principle is always expanding and changing. So we have to stay current with it. You know, I've, in, in some of the chiropractors I mentor, they somehow get bored at practice. I'm like, how the hell can you get bored in practice, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, so I start asking questions. I'm like, do you do a doctor's report? Yeah, I do a doctor's report. Well, when's the last time you changed your doctor's report? Well, I've never changed it. I did it the way this management consultant taught me to do it. I use their slides. Uh And I'm like, okay, so how long have you been doing that? 15 years. Let me ask you a question. Has your appreciation of the principle changed at all over the last 15 years? Well, of course it has. I'm like, so do those slides and the script that go along with it accurately represent your current appreciation of the principle? No. So <laughs> your assignment is your next doctor's report, no slides. You just get up there and talk and say what's in your heart. Mm-hmm. And consistently they come back on the next call and it's like, it was awesome. It was shorter. And it was my best class ever. And by the way, more people sign their families up than ever. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's because you were being authentic, right? right. So, so, so for me, um, if we reflect on, you know, and in, in, in evolution or revolution, when BJ's talking about uh, Marcus books, box book, where, you know, Marcus sent him the book to, for BJ to review it and, and ask, he asked for honest feedback and BJ basically said, I don't really like it. I think you missed the mark because he was talking about the spiritual greats. The book is called circle of faith. Right. And Marcus was looking at what made them all different. And, and BJ said, Marcus, the divinity of infinity is within all, right? And, and that, yeah. to me, that's like, I love that. That just resonates. And it's sad. The divinity of infinity is within all. So if we keep that front and center, right? And, and if we think, you know, if we take it right back to the major premise, a universal intelligence exists in all matter, giving matter its properties and characteristics, thus maintaining existence, well, What is universal intelligence? Go to Stevenson and read it in article 49 of the universal complete cycle. It defines universal intelligence. It says it's existed always. It is and always has been very intelligent. Being very intelligent means it's never made a mistake. Having never made a mistake means it always works for the highest good. Having these qualities makes it God. So that's what we're working with. Right. And Mm -hmm. it goes on to say that this intelligence is infinite. It's our perception of it that's limited. And we can only expand our awareness of it through experience. Mm -hmm. And it then goes on and defines innate intelligence as it's a subunit of universal separate from yet not separate from universal. And all living things has have an has an innate intelligence. So you have an innate intelligence separate from yet not separate from universal. So do I. So do the, the, this plant that's next mm-hmm. to me. So do all living things, right? And, and it's got all the properties and characteristics of universal. And its mission is to maintain us in a state of active organization. So while universal intelligence's mission is to maintain harmony and balance within the cosmos, innate's mission is to maintain harmony and balance within us with respect to our relationship with ourself and our relationship to all creation. Mm -hmm. So so understanding that and keeping that front and center in a simple phrase, the divinity of infinity is within all. And then then, uh, early in my career, a, a mentor happened to be a native elder said, Pete, don't take anything I'm giving you at face value, go out and test it. Mm-hmm. and prove it for yourself <clears throat> so so i said i'm gonna prove this chiropractic principle to myself just as bj said it's either 100 percent right or it's 100 mm-hmm. percent wrong and we're gonna find out which one it is and we don't frankly care which it is we just want to know and that's what drove bj right <clears throat> so so 
it begs the question, where is God not, right? And the answer is God is everywhere, 100% present, 100% of the time. So I just go out and challenge myself to see the principle in action everywhere, to see God in action everywhere, to see the divinity of infinity everywhere I look. And that just keeps life fresh, right? And, and it keeps every experience a new experience. So so that's sort of how I keep it fresh in my office. And, 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 and then I combine that with the principle of first and last, right? So, so one of my favorite authors is a, a Jesuit named uh, Anthony DeMello. And he's written a number of books. One of my favorites is called The Way to Love. And another one is a transcript of a workshop he did on awareness, mm -hmm. right? And, and Anthony DeMello... Um, talks about the fact that we're all victims of our programming. So if, if a monarch butterfly landed on your hand and you were a young child and you had never seen one before, you'd, go, you'd be like blown away. You'd be like, wow. And you'd inspect it and look at its legs and its eyes and the pattern on its wings, right? If an adult beside the kid and a monarch butterfly landed on their hand, they'd go, oh, a monarch butterfly. And that would be the end of it. It would be just like any other monarch butterfly they ever saw before. Mm. So Anthony DeMello's advice is always look at it from as if you've never seen one before. Bruce yeah. Lee said we should walk through life with an empty mind and from a point of neutrality. Mm. If we do that, everything's brand new. So if, so if I've got this butterfly and then another one lands, I'm like, wow, look at the striation on this one's wings just a little bit different. This is a little, this is the biggest monarch butterfly, right? So it's brand new. Approach this conversation as if it's the first conversation I've ever had with Danny Knowles. Mm -hmm. Or approach this adjustment as if it's the first adjustment I've ever delivered to that person in our relationship together. With the awareness that it might be the last. I might never get to hold another monarch butterfly. This could be the last time we ever get to speak with one another. We don't know. I'm, it mm -hmm. could be the last time I get to check and adjust that person. So if we, bring, I call it the principle of first and last. If I approach everything as if it's the first time I've ever experienced it, whether it's a, a new patient or an adjustment or a report of findings or cooking dinner for my wife and I or having a conversation with you, well, being aware that it could be the last time I ever have the privilege of doing whatever it is, it keeps you in the present moment. It keeps everything fresh and unique and exciting. And, and so that principle coupled up with looking for the divinity of infinity within everything, mm -hmm. it, it's a pretty cool way to move through life, I have to say. So that would be my, my number one tip for people. Of course, we read the green books and we meditate and stuff, but put that into action by looking for the principle. And it's, remember, it says universal intelligence, infinite. It's our perception of it that's, that's limited. We can only expand our awareness through experience. So go out and experience it. And, 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 uh, and, and, and then it becomes more about the process you're engaged in as opposed to the outcome that you're looking for, mm -hmm. right? And, and, uh, and it binds you to the present moment so you don't get stuck in the past comparing it. You don't get stuck in it. You just, you just get bound to the present moment, and that's where the, the, act, the magic happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So um, how can people – I have one more thing that I want to ask you before we wrap up – um, people, obviously, how can people learn more about going to pure and powerful and, and dynamic essentials? Well, D, just Google life DE or dynamic essentials and it'll come up. The next meeting I know is in January. It's uh -huh. uh, I'm, you know, humbled to say I haven't been to a DE since January of 2020 because of this COVID stuff. We're kind of locked in Canada. We've right. been doing them virtually and whatnot. Uh, and Pure and Powerful, if, if Pure and Powerful has a website as well, pureandpowerful.com. Um, and, and the information about our upcoming meetings will be there. We have our fingers crossed that March is going to be a live event. Um, we've been doing them virtually. Um, and, and God bless my wife, because I really was driving to have an in-person meeting in November. 
and and then our our leadership up here came up with the vaccine mandates and and just because of the tribe we uh because of the tribe our vibe attracts the majority would not have vaccine passports and it would have been tough for us to get into a hotel sort right, of thing right, so right, tracy right. was right again and we did it virtually um and but but just going to the website or they can reach out to me personally just find me on facebook and private message me there's also another it's kind of a spin-off but i've i've written a book it's at the editors right now i'm just finishing up the foreword and it's called wisdom from my nuts um and and to put context around that it's about an experience i had with an acorn many years ago and if uh if people just Google Peter Amlinger love bomb and, and my uh, little interview in, in the movie that Rhea made the documentary love bomb will come up and I'll explain my relationship of, with acorns and whatnot. So, so we've got this book. And then when COVID happened, I was just, in, you know, I always start my day by saying, what's my role? Like, God, what's my role today, right? What do you want me to do today? And and most of the time it's like, get to the office and check and adjust people and turn up life and tell the story. And it's pretty consistent, right? As it is mm-hmm. for you. But at the beginning of COVID, it's like, what's my role here? And, and it was like, the answer I got was hold space. Mm. And, and so I started a meditation, a morning breath, and I think we did it like 73 days in a row. Um, and, and, and we started a, a group and, uh, and we've got like 450 people in the group now. And, and so I'll post something, a positive something most mornings and Friday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern time, we do a breath. It's about a half hour long. Um, and, and, um, and it's been powerful for people. And we've got a great tribe from around the world and and I record them because I know 6 a.m. Eastern time is earlier out in your neck of the woods um, <laughs> and whatnot. So I, so when I remember to record them, we record them and, and there's a ton of them there. And, and so I encourage people to check that out as well. It's a good community and it's just another tool um, that, that we can use to help us sit in the sacred space and to develop our relationship with the creator and our innate so we can live an innately guided life which is what it's all about for me wow wow well i I want to um first of all thank you for your service to uh the profession and to your community um it it takes a special person i i uh to to feed into not only your community and your practice, but also other chiropractors and chiropractic students. So um, it's a very special individual. It takes the, put, puts the energy into that. So I want to acknowledge you and appreciate uh, you for that and doing that you know, for decades now. Um, also for taking the time this morning uh, to, to, to be with us and to also, uh, I know this will impact many chiropractors and chiropractic students and their team's lives around the world when they get to, to listen to this and hopefully get to uh, one of uh, your meetings in Canada or, in, uh, or at DE um, or the next time they run into you somewhere. Um, and if there's one thing that you'd recommend, student, chiropractor, new grad, practicing, somebody practicing 30 years, it really hasn't uh, been exposed to the principle is there something that's a one-step thing you'd say to get them to take the next step to getting uh, grasping the big idea better? Uh, two, <clears throat> three steps actually. <laughs> read, the, read the green books. You, uh, and like I don't, I don't want people to get their philosophy from me, Dan, <clears throat> because it's my interpretation of the principle. Go back and get it from Dee Dee and BJ, and I know they're not easy to read. I, I appreciate that. And I know there are some gifted people um, like yourself and, and um, Brian Dooley's popping into my head right now and, and Judson and, and many people who can articulate the principle really, really well. And that's good. And we all should, and we should get together and do it, but get it from the horse's mouth. So go back and challenge yourself to read BJ's words and Dee Dee's words and sit and reflect on them and read them over and over again. Mm-hmm. So that's step one. 
Two is hang around principal chiropractors, like create a tribe that that um, that resonates and that that is congruent with the the trajectory that you want to set yourself on. And then three, get quiet mm. and then and, and and meditate and court the silence and because that's where innate shows up, right? Like innate lives in the space between our educated thoughts. Mm. And so we have to work to increase the space between those thoughts and then go out and look for the divinity of infinity within all, like literally just become uh, uh, this person who's obsessed for lack of a better word uh, at, at identifying the expression of the principle everywhere and talk about it. Right. And, you know, it's like one of the pieces of art we have in the office, it used to be my only artwork for a period of time. And they just said, take all the posters down. So, and it's a row of trees in, in, true in scotland uh where tracy part of tracy's family's from and we're over there and the uh, the trees are bending they they bend like this because the irish sea sits here so they've been whipped by the and and it's a beautiful blue sky day blue bird sky day and the, so these trees are bent and they're massive trees and they're on a street called bent pink crescent and when i look at it i say bent neck crescent but uh but I look at that and it's like, wow, there's the principle, man. Those trees are adapting, but they're continuing to grow towards the light. And that's what it's all about. So the first time Judson ever came to my office, he was all excited. He thought he was going to see all this great educational stuff on the walls. He walks in and there's this picture on the wall of these trees. And he's looking around and he's got this puzzled look on his face and he's looking at the picture. And I saw, you know how Judson gets, right? He just lights up and he's like, I got it, dude. I'm mm-hmm. like, awesome. So, so, but that was just a, the fruit of me going out and looking for the expression of the principle wherever I go. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so those are my, th- my three steps, read, reflect on what you read, hang around people who are on the same path um, and then get quiet and go out and look for the expression of the principle everywhere. Wow. Excellent. I, this, this is a, I will, I will tell you, I, I, any time spent with uh, Dr. Peter Anlinger is time well spent in this uh, particular podcast, um, time well spent. Uh, thank you so much. And I want to encourage people truly look up um, lifede.com and get to an event, number one. Number two, look up pureandpowerful.com and get to an event, especially if you want to bring your life and your practice closer to the principle. Um, there's something that I, I noticed um, when I was on the Sherman College board, which was that we had looked at a, a map of the attendance at different colleges at that time. And it was very interesting. I said, you know, look at the ones that have the greatest attendance at this point. They're the ones that, you know, enrollments and just student body, the, they're the ones that were closest to the principal. They were the ones that were growing. It's just like your practice. The closer you are to the principal, the more your practice is going to grow. So grow get close to the principal to grow your practice. And we all have a gap there and we can close that gap more and more each day. So I, I want to thank you again, Dr. Peter, um, and uh, for all your gifts. And thank you for taking your time this morning. And um, we look forward to seeing everybody at Mile High. Uh, make sure you mark your calendar or just reserve your seats, uh, you know, right away. Uh, June 2nd to 5th, 2022. And keep changing spines and lives and minds with chiropractic. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Danny. It's truly an honor to spend time with you and to share with your community. And, and keep on keeping on. Uh, keep up all the wonderful work. And I'm just really grateful to see you healthy and vibrant. And, uh, and I mean, nobody walks the line better than you. For sure. So <laughs> well, thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you for saying that I- I'm honored. And you know, I'm, 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 I feel like I'm, I'm alive still today, because of chiropractic. So, uh, you know, I, I, that that means a lot to me to give back. So uh, thank you. And thank everyone for for being listener. We look forward to seeing you on higher ground in June.